Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen, and I am the CEO of a small medium sized tech company in Silicon Valley. I'm a former financial analyst and financial journalist. That is my credibility. What I'm going to say tonight is not loosely researched opinion, but is double referenced indisputable fact. Let us start with Susan Rice, who is disgusted at China and Russia for not helping the United States in its plans to reshape Syria. All right, so let's listen to what Ms. Rice has to say precisely. The United States is disgusted that a couple members of this council continue to prevent us from fulfilling our sole purpose here. A couple, that's an interesting talking an point. Addressing an ever-deepening crisis in Syria and a growing threat to regional peace and security. For months, this council has been held hostage by a couple members. There she goes again, talking These for members a couple members. members stand behind empty arguments and individual interests while delaying and seeking to strip bare any text that would pressure Assad to change his actions. Now, is why is that, that uh, they are taking a back seat in this particular case? So, let's see your more recent statement. Seen around the world, including in Damascus right now. I want you to look into the camera as you are and assume you're speaking directly to President Bashar al-Assad in Syria. Uh, what would you say to him? I'd say the United States stands with the people of Syria uh, fully and unequivocally in their aspirations for peace, As for democracy, stood with the people of uh, Libya. for a brighter future. Your days are numbered, and it is time and past time for you to transfer power uh, responsibly and peacefully. The longer you hang on, the more damage you do yourself, your family, your interests, and your indeed, family. Your Ambassador, thanks very much for joining us. Your family. Harm you do your family. Okay. <clears throat> very good. <clears throat> Susan Rice is disgusted at China and Russia, who she calls a couple of members. A couple of members. Twice in uh, one paragraph. I've been waiting for this showdown wherein you, Susan Rice, would try to do to others what you did in Libya. But you forgot one important fact this time, the internet. We publish the truths that you have suppressed in previous disinformation campaigns. We've heard your remarks. Let us hear the remarks of the real news because we know that Russia and China are hesitating to facilitate the United States and the West because they did exactly the same thing in Libya and they got the shaft. And dear reader, please bear with me and I shall demonstrate this. Let's see here now. The Shaft. Here we are. Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. Over the past few months at The Real News, we've covered many aspects of the Libyan war, mostly critical of the NATO intervention, which is clearly illegal and using humanitarian language to cover up imperialist objectives. If the mission had really been about saving Benghazi and not creating an even more compliant regime than Gaddafi's, there were ways to do that which would not have resulted in so much loss of life. But the NATO agenda does not mean that the people of Libya have no right to overthrow a dictatorship. That's right. I do not at all uh, personally dispute and the fact that Libya was a dictatorship. And thousands of ordinary Libyan people who want an end to the dictatorship. What the leadership of the rebellion turns out to be made of is yet to be seen. There are clearly some very shady characters, CIA-connected types, opportunists from the former regime, and so on. There may also be some legitimate representatives of the people. At any rate, it's not up to us. It's up to the Libyans. I think we should oppose imperialist adventures dressed up as humanitarian causes, and we should oppose dictatorships dressed up as anti-imperialists while pursuing neoliberal self-enrichment. Our concern, first and foremost, should be for international law. The UN resolution was a blank check to organize regime change in the interests of Anglo-American and French imperialism. The Russians, Chinese, and other governments on the UN Security Council didn't really much care what happened as long as they were not shut out of the oil post-war. Okay, so you can listen to the great Paul Jay uh, later. So let me return to my point. <clears throat> uh, 
I wonder who did craft Susan Rice's talking points this time. I recorded all of the lies that were made last time, the disinformation, in a document called NATO Intervention in Libya, the Washington Establishment Media Narrative, which I have posted on microtopia.org. The two, true disgust, in my view, in the world is with your lies. Uh, you hurriedly rushed through UN Resolution 1973. You conducted 25,000 aerial missions, dropping 10,000 payloads of munitions on an army the size of the New York Police Department, about 30,000. Libya has six to ten trillion dollars worth of oil, natural gas, and ice age water. Each soldier in Libya therefore guarded 200 million dollars in treasure a ratio that didn't work out very well for them with the West's invasion capitalism instead of competing with Brazil, Russia, India, and China. You intend to render them meaningless by penetrating them with your finance institutions, accumulating stock in their companies as you allow us here in the United States to starve due to your huge military expenditures. Your administration's support of indefinite detention laws would cause the original 1775-76 revolutionaries in the United States to point their muskets directly at you, a far more virulent threat to us than the British against our forefathers, whose restrictions were mild in comparison to these modern conceptions. Also, I'd like to point out the last time I heard somebody use the word disgust about opponent politicians, honestly, was when I was listening to a speech of Hitler's when he described Churchill and he said, it is with, I believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I feel a great disgust when I hear these irresponsible politicians. Interesting. Perhaps you have no personal stake in our founding as a nation. Perhaps you care no more for Jefferson than Hubert Humphrey. But many amongst us do. My family fought and died in the Revolution. Let us look at your behavior and compare it to Assad's. What was a proposal that you drafted that you used to overthrow the Libyan government violently, laying waste to their armed forces, annihilating their revolution, their customs, their culture, their laws? What will the consequences of your psychopathic arrogance be to our children, to my children? Ask the Africans what they think of your actions in Libya. Let's take a quick look. But before we do that, well, here we go. Outgoing AU chairperson slams West for disrespecting Africa. The African Union says no to the Libyan rebel leadership.